In this part, we're going to be looking at menus, specifically optimizing game menus in Tazzers. I'm going to make my window a little bit bigger so that you can see it better. And we'll have Taz Studio just next to here. I'll make that a bit bigger too. I've done a Taz on here before. Uh, in the last part, and as you saw, I just played through this a little bit. That's really suboptimal. We want to get rid of all this. An easy way to do that is just to click near the start, right click, hit truncate movie, and it'll get everything, get rid of everything after that. This first 600 frames is just the BIOS. There's literally nothing you can do to speed that up. So we're going to go like this. Now, this might be the first thing we can actually do to make some optimization progress. One thing about Tazzers is that they're timed from power on of the console. So even if in a normal speed run of this game, this menu wouldn't matter, it does actually matter to do this quickly in a Taz. As we can see, it sticks up, sticks around for a while, keeps going and it keeps going and it fades out. When it's fully faded out is the frame one, two, two, four. I have a little habit of putting an input there just to remember that it fully faded out. It's a pretty bad habit, to be honest, because I'm actually putting an input into the Taz, but I use this player two controller as just like a little marker. So the screen is fading out at one, two, two, four. What we can start looking at is if there's any way we can actually speed that up, which there is. If I press a button here, uh, the screen fully fades out at one, one, nine, nine. So we've already saved 25 frames. We could press the button much earlier. We could press it back here and that's faded out. We could press it back here and that's faded out. We could press it back here and that's faded out. Or we could press it all the way back here. Pretty much you just keep going back to find the earliest point you can press it. And it's likely to be fairly early in the TAS. Probably all the way back here, maybe. No. Now, see, I pressed that button too early up there, which means that I'm going to have to wait till that 1224 again for it to actually fade out properly. As you can see there. So it's possible to go too early on a button press. We want to figure out the earliest point we can do it and still have it work. That looks pretty good. That does not, that does not, and that looks pretty good. You can tell a pattern here, there is a red lag frame there when it does fade out, so you can kind of tell from that. Looks like the earliest frame we can make this fade out is 713. Now let's do some other experimentation here. What happens if we press button two instead of button one? Just for your info for master system, one is like B and two is like A on a NES controller. That doesn't work earlier. Can I just hold button one? No, I can't. I actually have to start pressing it on this frame. And that's pretty much all I can think of to make it go quicker. We do have the little pause button here, but that doesn't really do much. So 713 is as early as we're getting. I'll remove that little marker now. We've got this other little splash screen. So we're gonna do a very similar optimization here. There we go, that's faded out. That has not faded out. That has not faded out. That has faded out. If I did a frame earlier, it would not have faded out. So this is fading out at frame 779. One thing that you might be tempted to do in a TAS, if I've got another splash screen I can show you, no I can't. One thing that you might be tempted to do is just like tap it every other frame which could work. I mean, we're fading out at frame 779 there, but if you get it slightly wrong, like if you're on the odd frames rather than the even frames, you'll see that this doesn't fade out at 779, it fades out at 780. So when you're first starting out, you could just mash the one button to get through, but there's a chance that you'll lose a frame when you do that. 
So we'll put it back here where it was supposed to be and we'll fade out at 779. One thing about um, inputs, if I did want to do something like a mash, you can highlight all those and hit clone and then you can just keep cloning them down like that. So that's if you want to do like a mash or something, not that we're doing that here. All right, we've got another menu here. So this is the title screen and we want to hit the start button to start the game. If we don't hit the start button, we're not going to start the game. We can hit that start button very early, even all the way back there. And it looks like we may even be able to just hold the start button here. Or maybe not. We can start holding the start button there. And if we just press it there, it works. So that looks like the earliest frame we can do it, because if we're pressing it any earlier, that's not good. And we're going to hit practice here. seems to have worked. So does that. One thing that I like to do here, rather than unclicking it and click it, we had this uh, clone frame. So if you clone a blank frame, you can move this input down. That's a really easy way to move inputs down and up. And then if you, instead of clone, if you delete a blank frame, you can move this input up. So what I'll tend to do when I'm tazzing is just hover over a frame above here and keep deleting these blank frames until I've pressed it too early and it doesn't fade out. So it looks like there it didn't work. If I put it one frame later, it did work. So that's the earliest frame we can press that button there, 983, for it to work. Okay. Now we're actually into the gameplay. Mickey is going to automatically walk up to this dude, and we're going to talk to him. So he's got a bit of text for us to scroll through. So we'll just figure out when we can press the button. You must find three gems. You must find three gems. You must find three gems. So it looks like we can't actually press anything here, but we can on this frame press something here. See beauty in herself, but be careful. Now, if I just hold this two button, it's not going to skip because it's just like you're pressing a button and holding it. So you will need to let go of the two button and then press it again. So if you press it there, that's just like holding it. If you press it here, these red frames are lag frames, which means that they don't read your input. So most of the time you can pretty much ignore everything on those red frames. There is even a button to hide the red frames like that. But I do not like using that button. So it looks like maybe the earliest we can do is we let go on 1195 and we press it again on 1197. And you can see that we're up to the gems are protected by the Masters of Illusion, which is one further than what we had there. Now you might, um, this might seem pretty good to you, but sometimes games have two buttons that you can use to skip through text. So instead of pressing two, I could have pressed one. Now that's not any faster, but what if I had two, and rather than waiting till this frame to press the next text button, I just pressed one. There we go. So that's actually a lot faster than pressing two, letting go of two, and then pressing two again, because I've pressed two, and then the very next frame I press one to skip through text. This is a very common theme you'll see when you have two buttons to skip through text, Rather than going two, nothing, two, nothing, two, nothing, two, you want to go two, one, two. Or if you're on a NES or something, A, B, A. We skip through all three bits of text, so the door's going to open, and then Mickey runs through it. That's pretty much all of the menuing we're going to do before we get to actual gameplay. Next thing that we're going to do is be running through this door and entering it. But I'm going to save that for the next video, which is talking about optimizing movement. 
That's all for this part. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.